Yeah. Let's start with the first question. That's a test, Gary. I All right. So, looking at this picture taken at the end of INA 2021, whose shoes were these? And this is a real picture. This is just Not a test AI question, generation. then it gets serious. Just to make sure that you're with us. I win. <laughs> basically the person who's running the boss during the conference. <laughs> Got it right. <laughs> this was my shoes. I have new ones, so it's fine. <laughs> and I throw them in Riga. But yeah, it's, it was quite hard because like, they were all like dismantling during the conference. Uh, but anyway, I don't have to speak about my shoes at the conference. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> yeah. OK, now we want to ask you a more serious question. But first of all, we're going to ask very basic questions. So you should have the answer. So first one is, where are you from? Are you from the EU? or European Economic Area, so EU plus Norway, Iceland, Liechtenstein. Are you from Europe, but outside of the EU? Or are you from outside of Europe? Why we ask this question is that after that, when it gets more serious, we'll basically segment the results, so you'll be able to see, like, you know, if Europeans or non-Europeans have responded differently. So, please. Thank you. That's uh, interesting also to, ha to have a look at uh, who's in the room. Then we have another question to segment the results. So which sector do you represent? Emergency services and public authority or private company or other? All of you have answered. Just for the pleasure, we're gonna listen to this music to the end. Yeah. Oh, a few of you last minute, actually. Thank you. Now we can get started with more serious questions. So we'd like to know which of these topics you would like that we at INA, we spent more um, efforts explaining or developing activities. So first one is Next Generation 112. It can be Next Generation 911 if you're in the US or 999 if you're in the UK. Is it color location? Is it uh, accessibility for people with disabilities? Is it public warning or is it e-call? Multiple answers are possible. And I think we'll have to work on everything. <laughs> Actually, uh, just to comment a bit on it, we, uh, INA has an NG112 education program. Please reach out to Freddie and Christina. They are there in case you really want to follow up on this. And thank you for the great panel right before. All right. Yeah. Thank you. What is for you the main priority topic in the next year? And I think this is an open question, and you can write your answer. Yeah. SIP was very fast to write, yeah. You can also write more than one word. Seems that NG112, SIP, location, and accessibility. I see communication, public warning as well. Many interesting things. <laughs> Definitely. We need a doctor for that. <laughs> <laughs> Must be somewhere. All right. Thank you. So on Wednesday morning, that feels like a very long time ago already, but INA announced a preliminary recommendation color location criteria. That's a kind of a quiz question. Why, what were these recommendation parameters? 
Is it 80 meters for 50% of mobile originated calls? I should say communication actually. Or is it 50 meters accuracy for 80% of communications? So basically there's this new legislation that requires public authorities to produce color location criteria. Authorities are busy uh, developing that, but INA is working on providing recommendations. So this is just to recall that basically. And that's a correct answer. So the recommended parameters are f so basically for 80% of emergency communications originated from mobile phones, uh, it should come with a location within 50 meters. The next question is the following. Do you believe your country should adopt the proposed INA criteria to ensure a certain level of harmonization in Europe? A, yes. B, no, because the requirement is too demanding. C, no, because the requirement is not demanding enough. And D, no idea. The, the answers are very useful for us, so there is a big majority to support uh, the INA proposed criteria. Yeah, quite interesting. Thank you. So now a question for PSAPS. Uh, so does your organization suffer from staff hiring or staff retention issues? Sorry for the others, you can take a small nap in the meanwhile. We had a great talk, by the way, this morning with, about the uh, psychology of the staff. Yeah, so it definitely looks like it still is a problem, or it is a problem. Um, a bit everywhere actually in the EU, but, uh, but not only, so quite interesting. Thank you. The next question is the following. Many PSAPs complain about a very high number of false equals. What should be done on this matter? A. Flag the problem to the European Commission. B. Talk with each car manufacturer causing problems. C. Move from 112 equal to TPS equal. D. Other. TPS being the use of a third-party service to take the e-calls. Wow, we should do everything again. <laughs> well, it's not only us who have to do that. I yes. think everybody has to actually to flag that to the European Commission. All right. Thank you. Uh, so should PSAPs use interactive voice response systems to answer emergency calls? So here I'm focusing only on the calls. Uh, so should it be yes for all emergency calls? Is it only during peak of emergency calls or never? We had really great session and great discussion yesterday on the use of IVR where it was discussed. It was also discussed during the chatbots for the types of communications. Destroying the logo. Right, so we have a majority of you who think that it can be useful during peak of emergency calls. That's quite interesting. Some of you, um, 45 percent, no, not 45. Uh, some of you say that uh, it should be used for all emergency calls. And also some of you just say never. That's quite interesting results. The next question is, do you believe that artificial intelligence will one day replace emergency call takers? I insist on the one day. It will also be interesting to check in the next years whether these numbers uh, also evolve.
Okay, so big majority of you think that it will not. Uh, but yeah, some of you think that uh, we'll come to there actually, so it will be interesting. I think I stole your parts, but it's, it's all right. I, I did it well, so <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so should chatbots be used to support emergency communications management? So as we were speaking about IVR and uh, AI, so basically the crossroad is the chatbots maybe. Yes, yes, but only for non-urgent situations or never. We'll probably do quite a lot next year in the conference program on the, on the matter. Interestingly, the results are quite similar to the question we had before on, uh, on IVR. So I think it can be uh, helpful, especially for non-urgent situations. But um, yeah, it's quite interesting to uh, have a look at that. So the next question for PSAPs, do you intend to implement remote working for your call takers? A, it is already done. B, yes, in the next two years. C, yes, in the next five years. D, no. E, no idea. Go on, uh, make something out of these results. <laughs> yeah, all right. Po and remaining politically correct. <laughs> I won't there. <laughs> it was quite uh, mixed answers. Um, all right, uh, so is it useful for you to receive the following information together with the emergency communication? So when you receive the communication, you would get the following information. How useful is it for you? You have to grade it from zero to five. Zero being, or oh, one, sorry, being not useful, five being very useful. So how useful is that according to you? It's quite hard to analyze as well, but it's mostly, yeah, I guess all of them are fairly useful, uh, especially, yeah, the nearest defibrillator and the language of the handsets. Thank you. What other type of data should be provided with an emergency communication? I think this one is free as well. Yeah, that's a word cloud, yeah. You can type. Maybe no one has any idea. <laughs> So location, medical data, video, history. I guess it's the background of the, of the color, maybe. Let's see response time, vertical space, language needs, yeah, medical data. Yeah, many things. I hope there are engineers in the room who can make that happen. Location, it's already kind of happening for the rest now. Thank you. Next question is in what kind of INA of sorry, in what kind of activity should INA spend more efforts? So we have the conference held every year, but uh, it doesn't stop here at the conference. So should we do more webinars? Do you prefer to have online discussion groups? Do you prefer to see uh, published case studies? Do you want to see some specific working groups on some topics or more physical events? Yeah, so a bit of everything. So we'll have to do, <laughs> to work on every topic basically with every format. So a lot of work uh, to come, I guess. Thank you. What are your plans for NG112? 
Our NG112 implementation project is in progress or about to start. We will do it later. I immediately fall asleep when I hear NG112. I don't understand what this is about. It also applies for NG911 or NG999 for those of you in the room. Well, okay, let's, let's say that a majority among you are planning your NG112 deployment. So that's, that's the great news. <laughs> Next question is um, about um, the implementation of the European Accessibility Act. So to provide an accessible service and comply with the Act, in which way do you intend to ensure equivalent access for end users with disabilities? Is it by using real-time text? Are you intending to use total conversation? So it's basically real-time text plus video. Is it by using apps or by using SMS? We had great discussion yesterday on the implementation of the European Accessibility Act, so if you haven't listened to it, it has been recorded, so it will be shared with you soon. Okay, so a short majority of you are planning to use real-time text, which is a good thing, because it's also required in the law. Um, I'm not sure SMS will be sufficient. Interesting results, thank you. A new legislation requires member states to reflect and improve the handling of emergency comms. Which of these is not required in this legislation? A, the definition of color location criteria. B, assessments of how means of access for people with disabilities are equivalent. C, a definition of a public warning system usage framework and D, a definition of a roadmap on the transition to packet switch technologies, which of these is not required in the legislation. That's another quiz question, but basically to remind you about the existence of it. Wow, this is an interesting one. Benoit, you want to take the... No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you continue. Right. It's your so, question. The, uh, the one that was not required in this legislation is a definition of a public warning system usage framework. Maybe we can show in the next slide actually the deadlines. So the deadlines. Uh, on, 5th, on 5th December 2023, roadmap on the transition to packet switch technologies, which is part of the delegated regulation. I see this conference is super useful. <laughs> Um, five, uh, 5th of March 2024, color location accuracy and reliability criteria. And on 5th of March 2024, functional equivalence assessment. Nothing here in, on, on public warning. Yeah, because it's not in the scope of the mandate, simply. Uh, there's another legislation on public warning. Um, so we've covered uh, all these topics during the conference. It will be available in the recordings in the past conference material. Uh, but we also have a dedicated event uh, about it. Um, you will see the date in the next slide. Yeah, so you can already mark your agenda, the 19th and the 20th of September in Brussels. We'll have exciting talks about EU legislation for two days. Including packet switched? Including packet switch. <laughs> Christina is just cancelling her vacation now. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, we can move to the next question. So, still about legislation, as it's very exciting and we all have to know more about it. So, it requires implementation of real time text by 2027. So, do you think that this deadline will be met in your country? So that's in four years from now. We have either yes, no because of a lack of standards, no because the handsets and networks are not ready, 
No, because of lack of funding. No, because of all these reasons. Or oh, I don't know, don't, don't bother me on a Friday morning. All right, quite optimistic. Uh, we'll reuse that in 2027 when we see the state of implementation. <laughs> thank, thank you. For PSAPs and public authorities, do you intend to implement video calling to your PSAPs? A, it is already done. Yes, in the next two years. Yes, in the next five years. And no. And by the way, while you respond, uh, for those of you who missed the session with the people from Geneva, which was on Monday morning, Geneva uh, EMS already uses 20% of their calls in video, and they will be at the end of the year at 40% of all their emergency calls using video. Impressive figure. We also have the document that was published uh, last year on this very interesting topic. Okay. Um, so, yeah, most of you are planning to, um, to implement it, which is great. Thank you. I think that will be the last question for this interactive session. So we just want to give you the floor and have the opportunity already to shape uh, the program of next year's conference. Which topics do you want to hear about at the next INA conference? AML, Galileo. Galileo. It's good, huh? but wasn't expected to be that uh, right, uh, right in the center. Interest. We have some hardcore satellite fans in the room, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, CNG, SIP, a bit of everything. Some public warning. How to engage with the public? Yeah, that's very interesting. Information provided to first responders, recruitment, paella, definitely. It's in Valencia, so yes, it will be on the menu. The death of Twitter is interesting, actually. Um, as you know, the Twitter um, changed its uh, verification system, so right now anybody can buy a blue check and appear as a public authority and commu communicate as a verified organization. Super so, interesting. Very interesting. Just had a great talk about it during the coffee break, yeah. Maybe with some of you in the room still. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of this interactive session. Thank you for your feedback. That's very uh, useful, very interesting for us. Thank you, Gary, for being part of it. Thank you, Benoit. <laughs> Congratulations to you. And I guess we will give the floor to our dear president. Dear friends and colleagues, here we are. This year's conference and exhibition of the European Emergency Number Association is coming to an end. I hope you all met both old and new friends and that you will come back home full of energy and ideas with your batteries recharged as well. I also hope that you managed to find the time to enjoy Ljubljana, although the weather was not very favorable. Please note that all materials related to the conference, presentations, photos, videos, will be available after May 16th. I repeat, on May 16th and after, to be more accurate, on the INA conference website, inaconference.org. In addition, all participants will also be receiving an email reminding them of that. Later today, you will receive also a link to the satisfaction survey. While some of you have already filled the paper sessions, which were available at the INA Coffee Corner, we encourage all the rest of you to take a few minutes to give us our feedback. 
It is crucial for us to get your input. At the INA team takes your answers very seriously when preparing for the next event. If you prefer to use the paper form, I see the staff are distributing now papers for you. You can return them to the steward and stewardess as you're leaving the room. On a personal note, I would like to thank all of you that came to us and said thank you for the conference. I would also uh, like to thank all of you that came with ideas and comments uh, about uh, the conference, but please put them on writing as well. Also, a lot of people uh, were happy with uh, the, the way that uh, the initial session with Benoit, uh, Christina, and uh, Freddie uh, happened and asked for more of that. We take all these very seriously, so please put it in writing, put it in writing. I hope that the conference helped you navigate and face the challenges of our community. Among others, the migration to IP, the improvements to be brought to color location and accessibilities, the issues with staffing and the deployment and consolidation of public warning systems. Before we leave, I have a number of things that you will understand are in order. First of all, a big thank you to all of you. Thank you for being here. Next, it's my obligation to thank our fantastic event managers, Muna and Mathilde, along with the rest of the INA staff, Ali, Alexis, Amy, Pascal, Benoit, Christina, Freddy, Manu, Gary, and Jerome, of course, for organizing this event and ensuring it runs so smoothly. I would also like to thank our wonderful INA board members, Amy Lee, Kylie, and our Vice President, Mladen. Thank you all. Of course, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the hostesses, thank the stewards, the technicians, the, the entire Chankarev Dome staff for their excellent work throughout this conference. Please give them a round of applause as well. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, a, a big thank you to the people that made the content of this conference, speakers, chairs, sponsors, supporting organization, media partners, this conference could have not been done without you. Thank you, thank you. Now, make sure you mark your calendars according to what you're going to see up on the board. 19th to 20th of September, Brussels Microsoft Executive Briefing Center, the workshop on implementing EU law on emergency communication. 9 to 10th of September 2023, London, AWS premises, in a business partners event, an event for our corporate members only, and clearly you understand that this is a, a closed event. And of course, next slide please, save the date for the INA 2024 conference and exhibition in Valencia, 24 to 26 April, and as Benoit said, Paella, is going to be there in all forms and shapes. Uh, I heard from Christina that paella has a specific meaning in Valencia. Everything else is rice with something, but we'll all hear about that in Valencia, so be there. On behalf of the entire INA team, I would like to thank each of you for your participation. I wish you all safe journey back home, and I hope you get some well-deserved rest. And finally, this is the time that on behalf of my Vice President Mladen and the rest of the INA board team, I declare the 2023 edition of the INA conference closed. See you all in Valencia. Safe travels. Thank you.